Alfred Joaquin here for Get Sports Focus, sitting down with Coach Brandon Younger from Oak Grove Football. Say hi, Coach. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> so like always, you know, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit about your background, your athletic background, and you know, maybe where you grew up and, and, and all that good stuff. Well, like I said, my name is Brandon Younger. I was born and raised in Oakland, California. I uh, went to Oakland Tech, I uh, graduated from McClymonds High School. Um, I, played high, I played college football at College of Sequoias. I received an athletic scholarship at an HBCU, Langston University. I coached for over 10 years. I have uh, five years coaching at Alameda High School. I coached four years with USA Football. I was a regional camp director with USA Football. And I've, I've been coaching with Oak Grove, Oak Grove High School for the past three seasons. I'm currently the junior varsity head coach for Oak Grove junior varsity football team. And I also um, am the head coach and the owner of Grime Mode Elite Sports. Nice. I think I was here on your first day. I think so. <laughs> I think so. I remember I was here during double days. And I'm trying to remember. I was here during double days. I was really like getting shots of Rashawn. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, Coach Braun had said, I have a new coach coming. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, yeah. I remember that. And I was like, okay, there's something different about that dude. He looks like he's got some, some college, some, some major experience. Just yeah. by the way you talk to the kids and how you were showing the drills, I was like, yeah. yeah. The 2015 season was, a, was like a, a phenomenal season. That was uh, my first year. When I walked on campus, I was, I was coming to meet a uh, coach and I walked on campus, I started meeting all the kids on campus <laughs> and I was just shocked at how much talent there was on the, on the, on the, on the, on the campus. So uh, yeah, we, we got going. Um, we had a phenomenal group of kids. They really bought in academically and it, it, it really made a difference um, in our season. And we did some special things. I think we were like the first team since the, the first public school since Palo Alto High School back when I think Devontae Adams was there yep. to beat three West Cal uh, teams for a CCS championship. So that season will, um, that season will forever be uh, sketched in my, my coaching career. I was actually my first coaching championship. So, uh, yeah, it was a phenomenal year. And you, got the, year. And you, you were wearing that ring yesterday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was wearing it yesterday for the One Vision All-Star game. Just kind of wanted to, you know, bring a little bit of, of history to the One Vision game, kind of show it off for the, for the young kids. Nice. And speaking of that, you, you were a part of that too, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, last year I helped, I helped out with the, uh, with the combine. Uh, me and Aaron, we got together. Mm -hmm. uh, I had history of running camps. Like I said, I'm a regional, I was a regional camp director at USA Football, so I had uh, previous experience with running camps and with the, combat, the combine uh, format. So we got together, we put together the combine format. Uh, it was a huge success. It was really successful. Um, I appreciate those times that I got to, I got to be able to work with Aaron and, and the One Vision uh, staff and, and organization. It's a, it's a wonderful event. Last year was my first year. This year was the second year. And, and I actually talked to Aaron earlier today um, and complimented him with, you know, how the, how the event went. I mean, I mean, it wasn't a perfect event, but there was a lot of uh, new things and, and, and there was a big crowd out there. Yeah, uh, they're doing a phenomenal job. Like, you see the support from the community. Mm -hmm. I think it's awesome that, you know, you can get a, a group of eighth graders from all over the Bay Area and be able to create a platform for them to showcase their talents. Um, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a good event. I think they're doing phenomenal things over there at One Vision, and, you know, I wish them nothing but success in the future. Now, you've been involved with the game of football for a long time. Yeah. Um, what have what would you say some of the changes that ha that's happened like since you were let's say in high school i think the game i don't want to say the game has gotten softer but i think the game is as has evolved into um a less physical game i would say um there's a lot of different rules that are implemented now like mm -hmm. uh the crackback rule like now in um in our area 
you can no longer uh, blindside or crack back a guy. So it eliminates some of those big hits and some of those injuries, which I think it helps the game. Mm -hmm. But I think that's the biggest thing that, that is, that's changed. Um, back in our high school, um, you know, it was almost like an all-out. If, <laughs> if you weren't hitting a guy in the back, it was just a, it was an all-out war. So, um, but I think, I think the game is safer now. It's, uh, they're, they're helping put it in a position to where it can last very long and kids can play for a long time and play safe. And uh, I, I think it's heading in the right direction. I know a lot of people don't like a lot of the rules that's being implemented, but yeah. I think it's, it's, it's good for the future of the game and for the future of our kids and also men that's playing the game so that they can have, you know, um, quality life uh, after football. Now, this is interesting because yesterday, you know, I was – I posted a few things during the actual game. Mm -hmm. And I got a direct message from, from somebody that I know from uh, Southern California, and it was a, a, a link to an article talking about how there's this bill that if it's passed, they're going to eliminate uh, contact as far as, like, tackle football for youth. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't really – I don't really agree with it. I see, I see where they're coming from and, mm -hmm. and why they may want to uh, get rid of the youth tackle football. I don't agree with it because I, um, I think at the very young ages, like the really young, like the six, seven, and eight, eight year olds, um, I think that's a little, that's pushing it a little too early for me. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I, we talked and, you know, one of our goals is to, you know, start off our kid with soccer and flag football so he yeah. can learn all of the, uh, the, the different techniques it, it, it takes to, in order to play football. And we, won't, we, we don't want to put that, that, physical, that physical strain on such a young body that's continuing to develop and grow. But um, I think there are a lot of uh, benefits to playing tackle football. Um, and once you reach like, you know, 11, 12 year old, the teens, um, I think you can learn a lot about the game of football. And it also gets you ready to uh, get you prepared to deal with the game that's a physical game. You know, going into a physical game when you haven't played it straight from not, not planning a physical game to going to high school and playing, that could be a very difficult uh, transition. I think it's almost like um, the youth teams are like the, the, the amateur league for high school. It kind of gets the kids prepared. You see a lot of kids that have a lot of success in high school are kids that's played the game for a very long time. That is true. Um, so I think it, I think it, it helps uh, develop our kids, but I think there should be a, a, a limit to the starting age. I think the very young age is, is it sometimes can get a little dangerous to have those kids uh, taking all that physical contact at such a young age. Do you think there should be also a limit like with the amount of time that they spend? Like, cause I, I'd say in the last couple of years, I mean, there's spring football, there's summer football, <laughs> there's yeah. football, and then, yeah. you know. This one's a tricky one for me, because I, I have a lot of, I have a lot of friends, uh, uh, friends, associates that, um, that, that run spring football programs. Mm -hmm. um, but just in all honesty, my, my thought process is, I think it's a too much contact year round. And that's why uh, we've got to a point where we wanted to create something like how we did with grind mode and creating the seven on seven. I really think the seven on seven is the future for the springtime um, once the football season ends, because you know that year round beating, you know, you rarely give yourself uh, any time to like recover from recover, the previous yeah. season. And it can be <clears throat> tough on the, on the kids' bodies. I think, uh, I think the springtime is, is the time where you work on getting, you work on your speed, your strength, your agility. And if you are to uh, play in a, in a seven on seven program, you can still work on the different skills and techniques and you need from a skill position in order to get better. And if you're an O lineman and D lineman guy, this is your time to, to work on the different techniques and get stronger um, and to build in the build from that. Speaking of grind mode, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, so grind mode started in 2013 um, while I was at Alameda High School. It first started off uh, as a program. I would get together with the kids. We would go down to Alameda Beach, and we would go work out on, on, on the weekends just to continue to stay in shape like we talked about during the off season. you know, continue to stay in shape and sharpening our tools. Um, as the years progressed, it, it began to grow. We started to get kids from other high schools coming out and working out with us, and it, it, started, it just turned into a, um, 
into a training program. I've worked with, it started off with a kid, Keelan Doss. He's currently at UC Davis. Nice. He was actually the FCS and FBS leading receiver with yards and receptions in, in, in the entire country. Um, and Suleiman Hamid, he played at Washington State. Um, Robert Taylor, he played at Washington State. I know Robert Taylor. Yeah, Robert, <laughs> Rob. Um, Deer Valley, right? Uh, yep, Rob. Uh, uh, Camilo Eifler, he played at uh, Bishop O'Dowd. Bishop I worked out yeah. with those guys. So it started off as a training company. Um, where we would get together with kids and train. Over the years, I've worked out with a lot of kids, and, and this is around the time that we work out in the spring. Um, this year, we wanted to create something, something different. And like I said, um, we wanted to create another option for, from spring football. So we wanted to do a seven on seven, and we wanted to uh, you know, open it up to the community and, and, keep, and do something for the kids to keep them engaged in, uh, in sports and something and some activities. Because from my, from my experience, this is the time of year where you lose kids um, and not lose them like to the streets, or anything, but you just lose them uh, mentally and they mm -hmm. kind of get off their grind. So we wanted to provide something, a 707 team, where they can stay on their grind, stay in grind mode, continue to sharpen their craft, and it's, it's been going pretty well right now. We, uh, we're, we put together our team. We've got a team of 24 phenomenal athletes, phenomenal kids, and we're excited about uh, this upcoming circuit. We're excited about the Get Sports Focus 707 <laughs> tournament. Nice. We're looking to come and, you know, take over that and, and, and win that, but it's been going really good. Grind mode is, you know, a... a Aside from being a, a sports company and um, having a sports background, it's really about life. It's really about continuing to stay on your grind. If you have, um, if you have a goal or aspir any aspirations you may have, you got the grind. You got the grind towards it, and you have to stay in grind mode because you know right now it's a, it's a it's a race. It's a race to 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 your aspirations, and, and in order to obtain it, you got to continue to grind. Now you did mention you you went to Oakland Tech. Yes. Did I you did you play with Marshawn? I did play with Marshawn. <laughs> <laughs> I play with I play with Sean. We actually grew up together. Oh, okay. Um, I've been knowing him for a long time. We played together. He was actually a sophomore when I was a senior, but he was ah. playing on varsity. Man, he was a he he was a special he was special all his life, but he was especially special when um, playing in high school. One of my favorite. He was playing receiver at the time. A little bit of running back too, but phenomenal athlete. Um, he always had something special. You know, we stay in contact to this day. I had the opportunity to watch him win his first Super Bowl nice. live, and that was, a, that was a phenomenal experience. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was awesome. Also played with Josh Johnson. Mm -hmm. That was um, my next question. Yeah, I played I play with a lot of those guys, man, and it's just phenomenal seeing those guys continue to play and be successful in their, in their professional careers. And we talk a lot, actually, uh, uh, this last season. I got Marshawn. He actually FaceTimed my entire JV team, <laughs> and uh, he kind of just, you know, gave them some words of wisdom and kind of just uh, helped motivate them and in, 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 in telling them to continue to stay focused. So it's been, a, it's, it's been great watching him do what he do in the community and watching yeah. him, what he do on the football field and knowing that, you know, I had the opportunity to play with him in high school. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I covered him when, when he was in high school. And, yeah. yeah that, that senior year was a memorable year. Yeah. Um, just for the record, there's a viral video – of him talking about taking his lineman to Sizzler, <laughs> all right? Listen yeah. up, people, listen up. Yeah. If you look at that video, yeah. he's looking at my camera. Yeah. And then the other people just uploaded it yeah. because I had no access to that footage yeah. after our show got That's canceled. You. That's, That's, all you. Even, That's all you. That's all you. Even, you know what, though? Even back then. And it's all over ESPN and everything. I man. know. <laughs> people will be making money off that. No, yeah. but even, even then, Marshawn was always... This is how I feel about the way he is with media. Yeah. He's always been like that. Yeah, always. Right? Right? Always. Because I remember when, um, when he was walking off the field, we were at a baseball game, Oakland Tech versus – it was a Trans Bay baseball game. Yeah. He said hi to me and, and the reporter that I was with, and he knew where we were from. Yeah. And he was like, hey, what's up? Because we did a feature on him. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we, we, we kind of have that loyalty stuff yeah. going on. And I remember when that championship game happened, he was like, um, he was ignoring everybody else, but then he turned towards our camera and started talking to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty yeah. cool. He's a loyal dude, man. Yeah. Like, and that's, I mean, that's what you got to appreciate, that kind of stuff from a guy like that. Like, he's loyal to his city. 
loyal to, you know, the people that he grew up with. And, just, you know, that's refreshing to know that someone that was such like all those accolades and all that popularity and fame can be so grounded. And um, most a lot of times people don't understand it, but, mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. You don't some things you you may not understand, but as, as long as you respect it. Now he's got the beast mode brand. So does, does grind mode have anything, any connection with beast mode? Like um, with the mode? <laughs> no, actually it's, it's crazy. Like I said, we start, it started in, in, in 2013. Um, Maybe maybe it has some like unconscious. Maybe when I was creating it, it has some kind of unconscious. It's a tech thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. It's just just being in the mode, but it's it's really just. I think I think the beast it's mode. Catchy. The the beast mode is 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 more about like it's a mind, it's a mindset. It's a it's it's almost the, it's you know it's pretty much the same thing. But beast mode is just that Sean thing. You know what I mean and. And he's doing great things with his brand. He got a store. I know. You get an opportunity. Go check out his store. I've, I've purchased a lot of uh, items from the store. Got them Josh Johnson sweats <laughs> that are super comfortable. Them head, headache sweats. Um, <laughs> but yeah, grind mode is you know like I said, starting in 2013, and we've been we've been going forward for the last five years. I like your logo too. It looks it looks pretty sick. Yeah, we just <clears throat> just trying to just trying to do something trying to do something memorable, man. Like yeah. that's. That's really what I. That's really what I'm about. I, I I talk to our kids a lot, and we talk about um, nobody's ever gonna live forever. But the way you live forever is the memories you create when you're on this earth, and that's the that's how I'm trying to become immortal through the lives that I touch um, with grind mode, with Oak Grove, with work, with my kids, with my wife. Just continue to try to do special things and. And, and leave a leave my mark while I'm while I'm on Earth. It was awesome to see uh, to meet your family yesterday uh, before the game, and I was thinking about this uh, on my way up here. I was like, what kind of questions should I ask them? Should I talk <laughs> about family? Should I talk about this? Yeah. But May, I, I see you as, as somebody who who's successful because you're doing something you love. Yeah. You're giving back to the community. You know, you, you're a young father. You have you know you have beautiful family. Um, Talk about the just the journey that got you to this point. Man, it's it's been a long journey. Like I said, I was born and raised in Oakland, California. Um, I was I grew up in a place called Sabrani Park, and at that time, it was one of the most dangerous places in America. Um, but I've always felt like I've had, you know, I've had a fun, my family has been phenom phenomenal. They instilled in me uh, great morals uh, about being a person. Um, and although I was growing up in an environment that wasn't really uh, conducive of, like, a, 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 of, a, of a positive environment, I've always had something that, that pushed me to want to do something different and pushed me to want to be a, a different person. And uh, that, that, that way of thinking have, has gotten me where I'm at now. Like you said, I have the two beautiful children. I have another uh, child on the way. Um, oh, congratulations. Uh, thank you. I have a beautiful wife. My wife is... is I can't. I couldn't ask for any uh, for a better person to spend the rest of my life with. She's been so supportive um, throughout this journey and being a coach and and helping so many so so many others. You know, outside of our household, you know, sometimes that could be very straining for a wife. But she's been super supportive. She you know she has my back. She take care take care of our family while I'm out grinding in grind mode. Nice. It's been a it's been a phenomenal trip for me, man. Like I've had the pleasure of traveling to China with USA Football. I've, had a chance to see the world and being a kid from Oakland, California, it's, you know, you don't hear that many, that many stories that, that in the way my, that, that go the way my story is going. So I, I just feel extremely blessed to be in the position that I'm in now to be able to help others. I've always been a person that want to help others. Um, and it's, it's been a great journey and I, you know, I don't plan on it ending anytime soon. I want to continue to help these young men uh, get get to where they want to get to uh, athletically, with their career, academically, and uh, keep pushing forward. And hopefully, you know, one day my kids will be able to look back on the things that I've done um, and be able to be proud to to call me their father, and my wife will be able to proud to call me her husband. What? Well, that's awesome, man! Congratulations. What's Thanks. um? What what is the process like for a student athlete to get involved with? Uh, grind mode um, is it well, well first of all is, is grind mode something that that you want to grow into a you know like a 500 
student athlete organization. Maybe that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. But what, that's what, a lot. What do you, but, what's going on right now, and, and what's your vision, basically? Uh, of, so the, the, the vision with Grind Mode is, the, is to grow, uh, is for Grind Mode to become a community of athletes um, that, want to, that would like to succeed academically and athletically. I have a saying, a saying that, I, uh, that I use here at Oak Grove and with Grind Mode is get grades, make plays. And um, that's one of the things that we, uh, that we base ourselves off of. And that's what I want Grind Mode to become, a, a community of football athletes that, that have dreams and goals of pursuing um, academically and athletically their dreams and their goals. And we want to help provide platforms, provide uh, the different skills and tools in order for them to uh, achieve those goals. Um, so I see grind mode. I see grind mode continuing to grow. You don't have to be from Oak Grove. You don't have to be from San Jose. Um, you can be from anywhere and be a part of Oak Grove. With our 707 team, we had two tryouts. Um, we had over 65, 70 players at each tryout. It was kids from all over the place, from private schools, West Cal, uh, Oak Grove, Santa Teresa. We had kids from all over, um, Midi, Valley Christian. Um, and it was just good to see the kids come together. Um, we picked 24 kids, and those kids have, have moved forward. But we also have different things that we do and that we plan on doing for kids that didn't make the team and kids that still want to stay involved and continue to work. We, do, we offer a, a training services as well. Um, but we have a lot of things coming up. I'm, I'm really excited. I have a phenomenal staff. Um, like I said, my wife is, is super supportive, helps out. She's a part of our company. Nice. Uh, the Herreras, they help us out. Um, it's just, it's been, a, it's, been a great, it's been a great trip, and there's been a lot of people that, re that have reached out to us and that are willing to help. The community is really, has really received us. Oak Grove High School has been, have been great with us and helping us you know, with facilities and things of that nature. So it's been, a, it's been an awesome experience. We're excited to see it grow. We're excited to have kids a part of it. And... And the kids are really what make it what it is. You know, at the end of the day, we, we, we put together the events and we throw the events, but the kids are, are, are the ones that make, it, that make it possible. So, you know, we thank all the kids that came out to our tryouts. We thank all the kids that are on our team and the kids, that's, the kids that uh, continue to stay engaged with what we're doing on our social medias and all the events we have coming up. You know, and also like even, you know, being blessed to even do this with you guys is, is, a, is a blessing as well. So we see, I see Grand Mode growing. I like um, I like what you're doing with with the kids and you know I've, I'm on social media a lot or we all are and yeah. you know I, you follow me we follow you and we we see the stuff that you're posting and it's cool and you know I, I think there's always a benefit when you have a coach that is young yeah right yeah nothing against the older the yeah. old school coaches <laughs> but I not. I it, I'd say I see it I go everywhere and I could just see the connection. Um, what was what did you want to bring to Oak Grove when you took over, especially when you took over a head coaching position as a JV coach? Um, I remember we talked about this. Yeah, but. yeah. I, I wanted, to, I just wanted to change. I, did, I wanted to change um, how people saw the the the, the school because um, there's there's some great kids here, mm -hmm. and uh, when I got here, there was a, a lot of uh, I just heard buzz, a lot of negative connotation of what the school is about. Um, academically and things of that nature. So, you know, I created a, I created the junior varsity and the varsity Instagram page to, to kind of to highlight the, the positive things that are going on here at the school and how our, our coaching staff, how, you know, our junior varsity coaching staff, how we push our kids academically. We push them hard athletically and we, you know, we create a map for them to move forward in their, in their athletic careers and their academic careers. Uh, we wanted to, I wanted to change the perception of, of the school and we've done a great job and, it, and it's continuous yeah, you guys, yeah, you it's, it's a continuous battle and you know we've got a, a, a lot of people that have come in and, and I'm really excited about the freshman group that the last freshman group that came in we have a phenomenal group of kids the future at Oak Grove is, is very very bright and um, I'm excited about being a, a catalyst to that I'm excited about you know our staff and, and the, the, the faculty and, and everyone involved with our football program and helping to change the perception of Oak Grove. Did, did, you, uh, did you ever coach um, Maurice Washington? Yes. I, uh, 
Well, Maurice came in in 2016, and you know everyone knows. Excuse me, the fly. <laughs> Every, Maurice came in uh, in 2016, and I mean it's it's pretty well known of what what happened and him getting suspended for the year. Um, so he was here briefly, um, got an opportunity to build like a a, a fair relationship with him. Um, I saw him, you know, go through some things in life in his personal life. And, you know, getting, this, getting the, the year of football taken away from him, it was very devastating for the kid. And, um, you know, he had some, difficult, some, some challenges, but he had an opportunity, like we all do. He had another opportunity. He went down to Texas and Trinity College, I mean, Trinity High School, and he, uh, and he, made, he made the best out of his second chance. Yeah. And, and that's, that's <clears throat> phenomenal to see. I've always root for him. We text each other still right now. <laughs> I Snapchat him. And uh, I just always, sometimes I just hit him up like, hey, how's the grades going? Let me get a screenshot. <laughs> and he'll send me a screenshot of the grades. So, and now he's off to, to Nebraska, which is, which is phenomenal. I wish, the, I wish the kid, you know, nothing but success. You know, we all go through things in life, and we all have challenges and, and hurdles and obstacles. And, you know, that 2016 year being take away from, taken away from him was a, a huge obstacle for him. But, you know, like, 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 like all great people, um, you know, you got to continue to strive through the obstacles, and he's done that, and he's earned himself an athletic scholarship, so I wish him the, wish him the best. Wish you the best, Mo. <laughs> yeah, I, I see him a lot on social media, especially in, in, in recent days because of the commitment. Yeah. Um, but I'm happy for the kid, man. I remember I, I did that story on him, and, you know, it was part of the reason why was because I wanted to also – uh, bring attention to to the issue. Yeah, and something changed. Yeah, right? you know, I'm I'm glad that you know yeah. um, something was done. And and I really think I really think what you did and was a a, a catalyst to the change because that that story was huge and it yeah. was a lot of people were talking about it and um, uh, a kid was a kid a year of a kid's high school career was taken away from him. And could it could have potentially put him in a position to not receive an athletic scholarship, but he's yeah. such a talented kid that you know he was still able to obtain one. But that was big, and I think doing those type of specials and things like that, it's a it's a tip of the cap to to you know people like you and, and what you got, what you guys are doing that get sports focused to to uh, illuminate situations like that and put it out on the forefront. And whenever you do things like that you create change and that's what we're all about is continue to push things in the forefront issues that needs to be talked about and when there's issues that need to be talked about you create change when you have when you create conversation you create mm -hmm. change so that i think that piece created a conversation and it got to the higher ups and they realized that they needed to change something so now it's changed so now we won't you know hopefully we won't see any other uh, situations like that where kids are being suspended for an entire year of their high school career well I'm a big fan of Mo, and we're going to be following him. <laughs> I wish he would have went to Arizona State, though, so I could make some games. <laughs> Nebraska is far, man. <laughs> I, I, I want him to go to ASU. But, uh, um, yeah, he's going he, – I'm sure he's going to do some great things for uh, the Cornhuskers. Yeah, I mean, that smile. You know, you could tell he's happy. Yeah. And he, he – I mean, he's, he's connected with Dion. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm like, Dion, yeah. Yeah, that's – I mean, and that's a, that's a pretty – a pretty good person to be connected with, if you ask me. Yeah. Um, I think they, I think they carry like a lot of same with the personality traits. So I think, it, I, know, right? I think it fits really well. I think that those two fit really well. So I think that's why he had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of success over there at the Trinity High School. Shout out to Dion, man. That was awesome <laughs> what you did for the kid. Nice, nice. Well, I mean, so before we wrap this up, I, you know, I got a couple more questions. Yeah. What, 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 what is it like? to deal with today's youth? I mean, you've been here for three years. I'm pretty sure you've dealt with a number of different situations yeah. over the years. I mean, 13 years, yeah. right? Nowadays. Yeah. I think this generation is different and it's, it's a rebellious uh, uh, generation, but the key I don't want to give away all of my coaching, <laughs> my coaching juice, but the key is understanding the culture. Ah. When you understand the culture, you understand the kid. When you understand the kid, you have more influence on them. The more influence you have on them, 
These kids are all impressionable at this age, 15, 16, 17 years old. They're all really impressionable, but you have to understand how to connect with them. And the way you connect with them is through their culture. And that's how it works. Um, I think you can, you can have the old school approach where it's my way or the highway, either you're in or you're out. Yeah, you can have that, but you have to build a relationship with these kids these days. Back in my days, it was like, hey, this is what you're gonna do, and you do it this way, and that's how it's gonna go. Now, it's, it's, more, it's, it's important to, you gotta understand how to relate to the kids. And each individual kid are, is, is different. With the millennials, they're all different. They're all different, and you almost, uh, you almost, doing psychology you gotta you know figure out what kind of kid what makes him tick some kids you can be very hard on and that that's what motivates them some kids you you know you, you want to talk to them you don't want to say hey look this is what i need from you this is what i demand from you and this is what i want you know want to happen and the way you get them to respond to what you want them to do is you, you just got to figure out who they are as people and what makes them tick how many brothers and sisters they have what do you like doing outside of football what's your favorite video game hey let's play madden i'll beat you in madden like just <laughs> like all those different things i have beat some of my players in madden they know <laughs> um but yeah uh, it's i think these kids are you have to you have to relate with them and that's where that's where you bridge the gap between coach player teacher uh mentor is understanding their culture um their culture is a lot different from our, the culture we grew up in and understanding that is the key to reaching them. Have you, um, have you ever thought about being a head coach of a major program someday? I have. I, I, I have thought about it, and that's, that's actually a goal, a goal of mine. Um, a friend of mine asked me, um, I get asked a lot, um, what's your goal in coaching? Mm -hmm. I say, uh, I want to be a head coach, and I want to win a lot of football games, and I want to change a lot of lives. They said, what, college, high school? I just want to be a head coach. I want to win a lot of football games, and I want to change a lot of lives, whether it's at college, whether it's at high school. Um, so, yeah, I, I, you know, I do picture myself you know, uh, someday um, being the head of a program and you know, changing lives and winning a bunch of football games. Nice. nice. Well, we, we, we can't sit down and talk to a, a South Bay schools coach without talking about San Jose State. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, it, it's an exciting time, I think. Super. And what, are, what do you think, man? I mean, I, I went to San Jose State. So, so yeah, and my wife graduated. I'm a big fan. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of San Jose State. And my wife graduated from San Jose State. Um, when they hired Coach Brennan, um, I, uh, I went to the press conference mm -hmm. just to show my... I saw you there. Yeah, yeah we saw each other. <laughs> to, to show my support uh, as an Old Grove coach. Because I think the pipeline between Oak Grove and San Jose State, we have guys that went there, Jabari yeah. Carr, uh, Isaiah, uh, Osai, um, Will Osai. And we had a lot of guys that come from Oak Grove to San Jose State. So I wanted to go there and show my support. I think Coach Brennan and their staff are doing a phenomenal job. And it's, it's really weird, the connection, because Coach Alonzo Carter, I look up to him as uh, almost like one of my mentors. I call him a lot. For, for like advice and things of that nature. And I think the staff that Coach Brendan has put together along with Alonzo Carter is a phenomenal staff. Coach Carter is, you know, he understands, he's like, I, I see a lot of, of, of my, coaching, my coaching style in Coach Carter. I played, I played against Coach Carter when he was at McClymonds High School. Yeah. <laughs> we, play, we played against each other, Oakland Tech versus McClymonds. Um, well, that was so a heated I, I, rivalry. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's heated rivalry. <laughs> Yeah, man. But uh, I, I I seen his coaching style, and I kind of a lot of things that he did. I, I I emulate that, and because I saw that he understood the kids, and he understood how to reach them, and he understood the importance of building relationship with with coaches, and he got a lot of kids out of McClymonds, and now he you know, and I've seen his career and how he went from McClymonds to Berkeley High to Contra Costa College, and now he's at San Jose yeah. State. And I think that was a phenomenal hire by Coach Brennan, and they're going to get a lot of great talent to go in, to come in um, with Coach Carter there and, and the staff that they, that they put together there. And um, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping this season they can, they can get, it, <laughs> get it going and, and, and we can get some kids there in the future. Yeah, I, I remember I met Coach Brennan on the sideline of I think it was Granada and McClymonds yeah. back in the days. Yeah. And he was like, are you following me? You were just at the other game. I was yeah. like, no, you're following me. And I'm like, who the heck is this guy? Yeah, super, super <laughs> chill. Like Coach Brennan's been super chill, very yeah. approachable. I, like uh, 
this last and season. And he's a local guy too. Yeah, St. Francis, yeah. correct? Yeah. yeah. So uh, he, uh, I, I, took, I took a few of our JV guys. We went down to the camp that they had. We go to a lot of the events they have because it's, it's, right, it's right down the it's street. It's right there, yeah. And all of their events are free. And it's just a good opportunity for our kids to see Division One football and kind of, mm -hmm. you know, see that it's real, see that it's touchable, be able to meet a Division One coach. And they're, like I said, their staff have been super uh, welcoming. And uh, every time I go out there, Coach Brendan is really nice. I had an opportunity to meet his wife and his kids. My wife met his wife. So, uh, yeah, I think they're doing a phenomenal job. They're, they're, they're doing an excellent job with social media. I love, the, I yeah, love their marketing. Yeah. The, their marketing department is doing a phenomenal job, too. But... Um, I wish them nothing but success this year. It, it's huge for the city of San Jose. It's huge for the, the surrounding schools. And I see that they're really, they really have a focus on staying home and getting a lot, of, a lot of talent in the Bay Area and the nearby area. So that's awesome, too, um, because I think there's a, lot of talent. there's a lot of talent around here, and they can really benefit from recruiting in this area. Shield the Bay. Yes. I like that. Shield the Bay, baby. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, th this has been a really, you know, it, it's inspiring. It's motivational. Uh, I'm glad I got to know you a little bit more. This is not the only time we're going to do this, man. We're, okay. we're, we're, yeah. we're going to do updates. We, yeah, we got to sit down sometime. I'm sure you got yeah. stuff that you want to talk about because what the purpose is, one of the biggest purpose for this uh, segment that we started is to, um, to create a, a, a way for you coaches, for the coaches, especially yes. the coaches, yes. to give your message mm -hmm. and you know tell us what's going on and 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 your goals and and the difference that's that you're making in the community and all that stuff yeah, I, I i really appreciate i really appreciate this opportunity and the platform that you guys are creating i think this is this is something great i mean and I would say I wish there were more, but I don't want to bring in competition. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I, I think, you know, nowadays, it, there, here's the thing. There's so many things out there that a lot of times I think people are confused. Like, well, wh wh where do we go? Where sh yeah. wh what should we watch and all that yeah. stuff? So it is our goal or my goal is to just create positive content yeah. that can – motivate somebody to do something yeah and I, and I tell you what I, I you guys are doing a phenomenal job I when I first got out well I've, I've known about you guys uh for a very long time but my 2015 season I, I don't know if you remember I was like hitting you guys like hey we got yeah. something special I go a grove at. we got something I special know. and then you guys came to the practice was like oh yeah you guys have something <laughs> special and then you guys you guys were with us uh uh, all along the way and, and a lot of the things that it's crazy because a lot of the things that you guys shot in 2015 our CCS year I show it to, I showed it to our JV team yeah. and it just gives us the opportunity to look back and and to see see what we can uh, acquire if we you know stay focused on our academics and continue to work hard continue to stay in grind mode and uh, we appreciate you guys for capturing those moments you know yeah it was that's, fun that's awesome we have fun we have fun and, and like I said we want to we my main thing is to really stick with the mission of, you know, let, let's spotlight the community, let's spotlight the kids. Unfortunately, we can't do it for everybody. Yeah. But if, if we get in touch with a coach, mm -hmm. you know, like yourself, and, and you can use the materials to get your message out, then, you know, I, we're making progress. Yep, yep, definitely. <laughs> we're making progress. So, definitely. Coach, th thank you so much for making the time. This I really is, appreciate uh, it. This was awesome. And like I said, we're going to do this again. Uh, any final words that you want to say? Um, I just, I, I, I'll say this. Um, it doesn't matter what school you go to. You can receive an athletic scholarship at any school you go to. It's about what you do and how you apply yourself. Academically first. The hard work you put in in the weight room, in the gym, and then what you put on the football, what you put on the football field. You can do those things. You can go anywhere you want to go. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Get and grades. We'll get grades, make plays. I want a shirt with, with that. I got you. <laughs> I <laughs> All got right, you. Coach. Yes, Take sir. care. Yes, and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys at our tournament. Awesome.